Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today at the request of my twin, I'm going to do 2021 O level specimen paper, paper one, question four. This topic is on inventory. And guys, if you have a friend who you think can benefit from this video, please share it with them. It's a free resource for everybody. So let's get right into it. Okay, so uh, the first part of the question tells us that, you know, Singh who runs a business uh, has no opening inventory, but and in the month of September did the following thing, purchased some stuff, sold some stuff, purchased some stuff, and sold some stuff. Um, the deliverables, uh, two months each, is to prepare the inventory account and the sales revenue account. Now, the fundamentals of this is you need to understand the double entry or the journal entries that uh, will result as part of activities relating to inventory purchase and sale. And before I even jump into this, I'm going to share with you what those journal entries are and we can talk through this um, one by one. Okay, so in September 2nd, when we purchase inventory on credit, I hear two things. One is uh, I purchase goods, so my inventory will go up. Inventory is debit in nature, it's a current asset, so it, I should be debiting this account and therefore I would see a debit of inventory of this set amount. Now second thing is I, uh, from uh, if I purchase it on credit, it means that if I purchase inventory in particular on credit, it means trade payables will go up. Trade payables is a liability and is, uh, it arises as a result of purchasing inventory on credit. So trade payables will be credited for the same amount. Next thing, uh, on the 10th, I sold goods costing 28,000 on credit to Philippa for 39,000. Now, any sale transaction will result in two sets of double entry. One to record the sale and the other to record the inventory movement. So the first thing that we have here is debit trade receivables because as a result of the sale, you have uh, which is done on credit, you have a trade receivables due to you. And that's for 39,000 trade receivables is debit in nature. And therefore to recognize the higher trade receivables as a result of this transaction, you debit trade receivables. And you credit what? Credit sales, because sales is credit in nature and you want to recognize the higher sales, so you credit that sales. And then the next uh, thing is you uh, debit uh, cost of sales and credit inventory. So wh why do we debit cost of sales and credit inventory? First, let's tackle why we credit inventory. Inventory is a current asset and it's debit in nature. And if you sell inventory, then you will have lesser inventory. So you want to recognize inventory going down and therefore you credit inventory. Why do you debit cost of sales? Cost of sales is actually a type of expense, right? That's shown in the statement of financial performance. And it's a direct expense. Expenses are debit in nature. And so if you are selling something, you want to recognize that this expense has gone up uh, and therefore you debit uh, cost of sales. Now what's happening on the 22nd of uh, September, you purchase goods uh, using check. So what do you think this is? It's similar to 2nd of September, but instead of on credit, you are using check. Yes. It's debit, inventory, credit, cash at bank. Concept is the same, except that here you use cash, uh, use check, so your bank balance actually drops as a result of this, right? Because you are paying the, uh, the supplier for the inventory using your cash at bank. Now, similarly for this, this is the same concept as September 10th. Try it yourself. I'll pause the video for a while. Or oh, you pause the video for a while, I beg your pardon. And I'm going to show the answer right now. Yes, debit cash in hand instead of trade receivables because this is sold for cash. And credit sales revenue is the same here. And the cost entries are the same as the previous one in September 10th, so same concept. Now, knowing the journal entries would help you prepare for uh, part one and part two of uh, this question quite seamlessly. So let's see how it's done. Um, so we start with the inventory account. We start with the first entry on September 2nd. I've put here debit uh, to the, sorry, this should be the inventory account. Debit uh, to the inventory account because it's debit inventory account. So the ledger will reflect the number on the debit side and the particulars I would reflect the credit side uh, of in the particulars of the inventory account. And that's how journals translate to ledger. 
Don't understand? Let's test your understanding for September 10th. Alright, September 10th, guess what the number would be and where the number would be on the debit or the credit side. Looking at this set of entry. So you see credit inventory here. So inventory 28,000 will be seen on the credit side. And what is the particulars? What would the particulars be? So this is the set of journal entries that you that is reflective in the inventory or that affects the inventory account on September 10th. And the other side of the journal entry is cost of sales. So you're going to just put your cost of sales right here. Okay. And then you have a balance right now. And September 22nd, what do you think? Uh, where do you think the number will go in the inventory account? Yes, on the debit side because you are debiting inventory here. So in here, debit side, I would see 22,000 and the particulars will be the other side of the journal entries, which is cash at bank. Great. Then September 29, try it out yourself. I'll show the answer in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go. All right, I hope you got the same uh, answer as uh, what I have. And then to close off the inventory account, we have to always bring it down to the next period, which is in this case, October 1st, balance brought down of the same balance, debit balance. Sales revenue account. So sales revenue account, we have a situation where we have sales revenues on the 2nd of September, oh sorry, the 10th of September, that's the first sales entry, right? What happened on the 10th? So what do you think, where do you think the number should be? Sales revenues? account just looking at this journal entry here yes on the credit side and what is the, what should the particulars be yes the other side of the journal entry in this case trade receivables to not ray but to philippa okay then the balance would be credit side and then the next i transaction affecting sales is 29th so let's put it what's the where's the number going to appear Yes, again, on the credit side, right? So let's look at this this way. And particulars will be the other side of the journal entry. And then I bring a balance here. The revenues account, which is a, in a statement of financial performance account, will always be closed at the end of the month to the income summary. Just to close it off, and this number will be brought into the statement of financial performance for you to compute your ultimate profit or loss. Okay, so that's part, first part of question four. Now let's move on to the second part. Now they ask you to, uh, what's one accounting theory for inventory? You should know this, low of cost or net realizable value, and that's how you should value your inventory. In terms of explanation, I just Googled it, but it's also available in your textbooks. And what it essentially means is if you have inventory in your statement of financial position, it sh the value of it should either reflect the, the lower of the cost price that you paid for it or the net realizable value. Now, if let's say the net realizable value is higher than the cost price, then you don't uh, value inventory at the higher cost, uh, higher realizable price, but you only value it at the lower cost price. But if your cost price is higher and what you can sell it is only at a lower price, then the prudence concept would tell you that hey, you got to reflect the lower your inventory value at the lower value to make it a more uh, holistic, prudent way of looking at the value of your inventory. Okay, so that's uh, the two parts for this question. The third part is actually relating to uh, trade receivables turnover. So I won't cover this. I'll do a separate video on this. This uh, video was just dedicated for inventory. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, it's been useful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free. Let me know.